Hi guys, it's Laurin and today we're going to have a look at how to use the area reinforcement tool in Revit 2022. Firstly, we're going to have a look at how to actually model the area reinforcement. You will see how simple it is. The second point we're going to have a look at is how we can actually change the spacing between the different rebars because Area reinforcement is a whole system of multiple rebars. Then the next point is how to move rebars in a rebar set, which is pretty exciting because it's a new functionality that came out with Revit 2022. Then we also see how we can add hooks um, in area reinforcements at the end of each rebar. And then in the end, um, I'm showing how to specify a cover for a whole concrete element, but also for um, just one area reinforcement. Now, now, before we're getting started and diving into Revit, there's one thing that is important to mention for me. Um, please always consider another building material than concrete and cement. Um, and keep in mind how bad concrete is for the environment. We are currently destroying our world by building everything in concrete. Cement is responsible for roughly 9% of the global CO2 emissions and in the next couple of years we're going to run out of sand, which is another ingredient of concrete. Now, I know that we cannot replace entirely concrete by timber or engineered bamboo. Um, but I also think that those 3D modeling softwares are helping us using our materials better. All right, guys, let's get started in an empty Revit file. I haven't done anything but just opened a structural template. And we first want to look at how to model the area reinforcement. And in order to do so, we need to model a floor. Um, in order to do that, we go to a structural level, structural plan, could be also level one, it doesn't matter. And here we can click on structural floor, which is under the structure tab. And then we have different um, commands that we can use to model that. Um, for simplicity, I'm just gonna use the rectangle one. I go on escape and click OK. Now what we got is a slab and I'm just gonna change that to in situ concrete. Um, and now we have that slab. Of course we can always change to a realistic view, but I think that it's much nicer and it's better to model in wireframe if we don't have that many elements open. All right, next step is that we can go to area reinforcement and the structure tab and just click it. And now we see um, in the left corner, pick structural floor or wall for area reinforcement. So what we're gonna do is now we just select the in situ concrete slab. When you open an empty project, then you always get the warning or like the, the yeah, the message, um, the rebar shape definitions will not include hooks. All right, then we click on OK. And now we can basically select um, the area, the boundaries. We're going to select those boundaries and get then the area reinforcement. Now the important part to mention right in the beginning is that there's different things that we can select when we click on tab, there's basically two different layers, the top and the bottom one, but then also the layers in the different directions. And then the fifth one, which is actually the most important one, is the system. And that you can see over here, structural area reinforcement. And now only at the structural area reinforcement system, we can actually make changes which is for example, top major spacing. We can change that to 600 in order to see what we do, what changes we do. Um, let's make it two meters. 
um, and let's make it uh, let's 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 have this one 200 everything else five meters I just want to show you what that does and it's really important because people some people get stuck in that don't understand it now we can actually see what changes we have made in the area reinforcement is that we yeah, change the, the spacing and we have those four different layers that we can actually edit. And what we also can do is actually only um, select the area reinforcement and then we can edit the boundaries afterwards. So that is an important part of the whole modeling thing. You can also see that all the, the settings didn't change. So um, all the spacing parameters that we did before, they remain. Now, um, which is actually quite exciting is that Autodesk Revit 2022 has a new feature which allows us now to actually edit only a couple of rebars. And when we go to the right, we can just test it out. I can show you. We need to find a rebar. Um, and I only click on that rebar and edit that bar. So now I click on it and I can move it around. And in the system, the really good thing about the whole thing is that uh, when you select the system, you still have the same spacing. So di that didn't change. But sometimes you have like openings and you actually want to keep the same spacing, but only want to move two or three rebars. And you couldn't do that before Revit 2022, but now you do. All right. As I mentioned in the introduction, we're now having a closer look in the settings. So I'm going to move the project browser a bit down and we're going to have a little bit deeper look into what's here and what we can actually do and what we can change. All right. So when we click again, again, I want to point out the difference between the different rebars and then also the system. You can see here, you get more detailed parameters about only, um, yeah, that distribution, that rebar set, but it's all grayed out and you cannot uh, change it. But if you click on the system, the structural area reinforcement, you have all yeah, the, the parameters that you can change, like spacing. And the next thing we're gonna look at, what type we want. Now this is um, nothing I'm familiar with. I think it's probably American standards, not European. Um, in order to change it to rebus, we're familiar with in Europe, we can actually go under insert load family and then load a family. But that's something for another video. We just stick with those for now. All right. But what I wanted to say is actually the, the hook type. So we can now add hook types 90 degrees and then those hooks will be added to the end to both sides. And then we can also say we want those hooks upward facing. Um, and again, when we select the structural area reinforcement, we can of course do that for everything. We can have like 180 degrees. Um, where is it now? Um, oh yeah, that's here. You can see that here, but we can also, um, yeah, edit that type. No, we cannot do it here, but we can we can make our custom made um, hooks. All right, so that's for hooks. And then um, we can also we can also change um, the the major direction. Um, so then this disappears. So now you can see when we added the type, we click, we can actually 
yeah, we, we have all the freedom to choose, hey, I actually want the top minor direction to be visible or to be yeah, modeled in, or I don't want it. All right, what we also can do is uh, we can choose actually the type of spacing we want. So we select the structural area reinforcement again, and then we see here in the beginning structural uh, layout rule, and then we can change to fixed number and then say, um, then you see down here that it changes the major spacing is grayed out now, but we can actually type in, we want 80 rebars and then you see it's getting denser. The spacing is getting closer. You can also do that, for example, for another one. And now you see how quickly that changes. Now, the last thing I wanted to show is actually uh, the rebar cover. Um, so when we select again our area reinforcement and then we can go here to additional top cover. So what that means, basically we have for each component already a cover, um, which is also when you select this lab, then you can see rebar cover here. Uh, top face, bottom face, other faces. Um, that is a setting that you can actually do here on a structure and then cover. You can choose to do faces, but also a whole element. So I'm not gonna do that now. It's, yeah, it's a setting that is already there and you can then change it. Just that you know uh, that we can add a additional cover of let's say 10 millimeters and then the whole system moves down. Um, top cover, we can do that again. Um, this is a structural area, we will do it a bit more. Let's say 50. And now it all moves down because we made this change. Welcome back. I hope the video was useful uh, for you. And this is only the beginning. Uh, I plan to publish a lot more videos to the topic of reinforcement modeling in Revit. So the way I want to structure is I want to have one video which is showing every command that is available, how we can model it very in a sim very simple way in Revit. And then that one is followed by another video to the same topic, but is diving into Dynamo and how we can use those tools and automate our processes and then scale it up so that we can just yeah model much faster. Now, stay safe and I see you on the next one.